Hey everyone, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and welcome back to the second part in a three part series about false color. In the last one, I showed you how to get this all set up to a point where we can start analyzing shots, and in the next one, I'm going to show you how we take what we learned in this video and apply it when you're on set. First, I want to tell you what false color can't do. It's not going to be able to tell you the color, the direction of the light, or if it's a hard or soft source. What it can tell you is exposure levels throughout a scene. So you can get contrast ratios by picking two points in a scene, whether it's one side of an actor's face to the other, or if it's the actor to the background, or one actor to another actor. And you can know what the difference in exposure is between them. Taking images that you like and learning the ratios that are being used can help you achieve that same look in your own work. It'll also help you be more consistent and direct your audience's attention to where you want them to look. There are two ways of talking about ratios, in light levels or in stops of light. To figure out the light level ratio, you take the brightest point that you want to compare and you divide it by the darkest point. For example, if we take the key side of an actor's face and divide it by the fill side. The key side is around 45 IRE and the fill side is around 15 IRE. So you're going to divide those two, 45 divided by 15, and you'll get three. So it's a three to one ratio meaning the key light is three times brighter than the fill side. You can take this same thing and go from the actor's key side to the background. In this one, the actor's face is at about 50 IRE, and the background is around 25. So divide those two, and you'll get a two to one ratio, which is saying the actor is that many times brighter than the background. This is probably the easiest way to look at it. The other way is in stops, which is a little harder to figure out. You're gonna to wanna to pick a starting point, Usually I pick the point that I want to call properly exposed, and then I go down or up from there. To figure out how many stops below an area is, you will half the properly exposed number, and every time you do that, that's one stop under. Going above your properly exposed area, you will double the number, and then that's one stop over. So I'll keep having or doubling until I'm in the same color range to the area that I'm comparing it against. Let's compare the key to fill in this shot. So looking at the key side of the face, I can see that his face is about 80 IRE, right here in this yellow area. And then it's in this dark blue to blue range, around 20 IRE for the fill. So we wanna go from 80 IRE and have the number until it gets to 20. And that will be how many stops of light difference there are. So 80 down to 40, that's one stop. 40 down to 20, that's two stops. So we have a ratio of two to one in stops. If we compared the same thing, but in light levels, you would divide the 80 IRE by the 20 IRE, and we would get a four to one ratio. Let's look at a different image and get the ratios. From here on, I'm gonna talk in light level, but it's up to you and how you wanna read and communicate it with your crew and when you're analyzing and talking on set. Light levels will be faster, but stops are usually easier to understand and give direction on. If you say I need the background one stop under, your gaffer can pull out a light meter and get right to work where saying you need to drop it 20 IRE will involve some math on their end. So in this image, I'm gonna just break it down and get a bunch of ratios. Our key to fill ratio is about 40 IRE to 40 IRE. So it's a one to one, meaning that it's evenly lit across the face. Our main actor, again in the 40 IRE level, to this actor in the background, who's about 20 IRE, will divide the 40 by 20 and get a two to one ratio. And then the main actor at 40 IRE to the background, which is pushing close to 80 IRE. You'll divide the 40 by the 80 and get 0.5 to one, meaning that the main subject is about half as bright as the background. Now, knowing all of the ratios in the scene, you could take this into your own production and try to work with those same ratios, which is what I'm gonna show you in the next video. This is also where it's really helpful to get the full version of the false color plugin because you can be analyzing these shots using the same false color as the monitor that you have, whether it's Small HD, RE, Flanders, Atomus, or Blackmagic. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and check back soon for part three. As always, happy shooting.